Good news, everyone. Okay, the news is actually slightly late, but still, it doesn't really matter. This year, Betaflight developers did not force us to wait that long for the next Betaflight release. Yup, Betaflight is back on track, and the next major release, Betaflight 4.4, is almost here. Right now, when I'm recording this video, it's still in the release candidate date phase. But it's the release candidate 4 and that means that, well, it's almost ready. And in this video, let's talk about the three most important features in the Betaflight 4 .4, or at least the ones that I consider the three most important features. Because, you know, it might be subjective after all. The Betaflight 4.4 is big of a release. There are almost 300 merge requests that were flagged with the Betaflight 4.4 milestone. Most of the stuff is under the hood. Most of the users will never really realize how much work went into the Betaflight 4.4. Very little of the super new fancy and shiny stuff, but the solid work that just makes the Betaflight a better flight controller firmware. And yes, I know there is still a group of people that say that everything after Betaflight 3.5 flies like the garbage. I know, they exist. Luckily, they are a minority and we should be happy that we have the new beta flight. Now, let's go back to the three most important features, subjectively speaking, in the beta flight 4.4. Feature number one is the HD OSD support via the MSP Display Port. This is very important. This change applies only for the users of the digital FPV system systems like the HD0 WTF OS or the walk snail. Now the canvas on which you can place the OSD elements can be wider and taller and in general allows you to organize the space in your goggles better. That is one of the features that is already available in the current release of iNav and now the beta flight is catching up. And like I mentioned this mostly affects the HD0 walk snail and WTF OS users. Just the nicer layout of the OSD in your goggles. And the activation of this feature is extremely simple. Just go to the Betaflight configurator, open the OSD tab and select the HD format. The OSD preview will adjust and you will be able to place the elements like you want them. Bear in mind, there is also a feature that auto detects the HD layout capable VTX when you have configured the MSP display port and enables it when required. If however you are using analog or the standard implementation of the DJI OSD, you are stuck with the standard format. For the newer systems, just select DHD and use all the space you have. This video was recorded thanks to my Patreons and YouTube channel members. Thank you guys, you're the main reason this channel keeps going. If you want to support me making videos like this, then please consider becoming Coming one for as little as two bucks a month. Thank you very much. Highly appreciated. Feature number two is the improved GPS rescue. Because you know, the original GPS rescue was kinda, well, a finicky system. Yes, it was working great as the last resort when you lost control on your quad, because it's better if it crashes close to you than far, 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 far away. But the final phase, well, <laughs> It was far from optimal. Now, with the implemented changes, the GPS rescue should behave much better. All the flight phases should be smoother, it should nicely gain the target altitude, go home, start the descent and the best part, it at the end, it will land and auto disarm. Yes, it will finally land and after touchdown, shut down the motors. It's no longer a crash that is just happening close to you instead of far, far, far away. There are some limitations. The limitation number one is that your quad 
will not land on point. It will not touch down in the place when you took off. It will just land somewhere close. And the limitation number two is that it might not be flash and fly and some tuning might be required. Luckily, there is a long instruction on the GitHub that should give you a nice information on what you might have to change to have the best possible results. The link is in the description. The best feature number three is the cloud build system. Betaflight dev team no longer builds hexes. The cloud build system builds hexes for you. And the best thing is that you can tell the cloud build system on which features you want to have included and which features you don't care and you do not really need them. Like nowadays, who needs the SAMHRX protocol? You can easily build yourself a beta flight without the features that you might need not need. This is very important from the point of view of the pilots that are using F411 or F722 flight controllers. They are running out of flash memory and soon you might just have to build yourself a hex without some of the features to be able to fit beta flight on your flight controller. It's not required now, but might be required in the future. That's not all and there are many, many other changes that was put into the beta flight 4.4. Improved anti-gravity improved dynamic notches, improved RPM filtering, VTX over MSP. For this one you will of course need a compatible hardware like OpenVTX or the HD0. Or from the top of my head improved air mode transitions. The list is long and it includes almost 300 different positions. If you want to check all of the changes the link is in the description. And finally Betaflight 4.4 requires the latest version of the Betaflight configurator. You need Betaflight configurator 10.9, which is also in the release candidate phase when I'm making this video. Before upgrading, remember to make the backup of your current configuration. In case of the config migration between Betaflight 4.3 and Betaflight 4.4, there is the online tool that simplifies the process and makes it almost safe. My personal advice is not to migrate the configs directly. There just always might be small default value changes that you will overwrite with the migrated config. It's just better and safer to set up everything from scratch and then only after a few flights improve the config by copying, for example, PID gains or the filter cutoff frequencies. In general, you should avoid copying the full configuration between major releases. And let's be honest, setting up Betaflight nowadays doesn't really take that much time. Here's the next video you should watch. In the meantime, I'm Paweł Spychalski, thank you very much for watching and like always, happy flying!